We're coming to the end of yet another year and what has actually been quite a big year for Python. Not only did they release their newest version 3.13 with some of the biggest changes and features seen in Python to date, they did so 30 years after Python 1.0 graced our editors for the first time. With all the excitement around that release and to celebrate the occasion, I thought I would go back in time and take a brief look into Python's history. Specifically, we'll be looking at the biggest feature or update in every Python release. We're only looking at feature versions in this video, so there'll be no patch versions here, and due to a lack of change logs, we'll only be looking at versions 1.5 and onwards. That's still 24 versions we need to cover, which is an awful lot. So I've roped in my friend Indently to help me out with it. Special thanks to him for doing this and be sure to check out his channel. Use the link in the description below for more awesome Python content. By the way, if you like what I'm wearing right now, check out Underthreaded. They make some great high quality clothing for devs and they make an open source contribution for every product you buy on the store. So take a look and make the easiest open source contribution you've ever made. You can get 10% off using the links in the description below. Now that you've done that, let's start off strong and talk about arguably the most hated Python feature of all time, which was released all the way back in Python 1.5. Yep, we start our journey with the creation of the GIL in 1997, which incidentally was before I was born. I've already talked about the GIL in some detail on the channel before, so I won't rehash all that, though I will briefly talk about its intended purpose, to improve performance. That seems very odd to say now, but back when multi-core computers weren't really a thing, I've got a laptop from 2005 with only a single core, single core performance was paramount, and the GIL delivered that in spades. By the time it became a problem, it was so ingrained in Python that it took two decades to figure out how to remove it. From that, we immediately stumble across our first oddity, as versions 1.6 and 2.0 share the same biggest feature, which is Unicode support. Sometime after the release of 1.5, many of the core development team left CNRI, the company that Python was being developed under at the time, and formed the Python Software Foundation. The focus of development switched from the next 1.x release to a 2.0 release of Python, which included a lot of work the team had done at CNRI. This work was released as Python 1.6 on the same day Python 2.0 Beta 1 was, with the changelog for 1.6 largely derived from the one for 2.0. Work on 2.0 continued until the final version was released in late 2000, but nothing more major than Unicode support was added, meaning both versions share the accolade. While the changelog regards nested scopes as the biggest change in Python 2.1, I would argue that support for Dunder Future directives added in PEP236 has had a bigger impact on programmers throughout the years. These provide an opt-in for planned breaking changes in Python, providing maintainers more time to make any necessary changes, and a way for the Python team to back out of any changes that transpired not to work out. This was used extensively during the migration period to 3.0, with many breaking changes such as float division, the print function, and Unicode literals introduced to 2.x through it. Many of you will probably be aware of the annotations feature that will now never become an actual feature, and some may even be aware of the easter egg hidden within as well. To say Python 2.2 has a biggest feature is somewhat of an understatement, as the entry here is the incredibly far-reaching changes to Python's entire class system, which includes the ability to subclass built-in types, static methods, class methods, descriptors, properties, a new algorithm for multiple inheritance, the super built-in, and more powerful attribute accesses. That's a lot, to say the least. So much in fact that other innovations like iterators don't even get a look in. I would really recommend going through this particular changelog though, as 2.2 really brought an awful lot to language and we all use the vast majority of it every day. Speaking of things we all use every day, Python 2.3 added something even the most novice programmers will be familiar with, booleans. Yep, unbelievably, Python didn't have a dedicated boolean type for the first 14 years of its life though this may have been due to disagreements over how such a type should be implemented, and the fact that integers could continue being used while the discussions played out. PEP285 goes into details of the results of these discussions. Python 2.4 was another release that added an awful lot of things we see all the time today, including built-in sets and generator expressions. But perhaps the most used prominent addition was decorators, Decorators were originally created to make static and class method definitions more obvious, and were born largely out of submitting to pressure rather than anyone thinking it was the best solution. But yet, here we are, nearly 20 years later, using them all the time in every which way. Another feature-filled release, Python 2.5's biggest feature is another that speaks to developers of any level. 
conditional expressions, or in layman's terms, one-line if statements. The syntax we use today was the one originally proposed, but this was initially rejected due to it being too uncomfortable for many in the discussion. A vote followed in which there were 16 different candidates for the exact syntax, as well as any write-in submissions made during the vote. This vote allowed participants to rank their three favorite and three least favorite submissions to decide once and for all which syntax should go forward. The winner was this, which you'll notice is not the syntax currently in use. The result of the vote was deemed inconclusive and our Lord and Savior Guido stepped in and chose the current syntax, the one that Pep initially proposed in the first place. Go figure. Carbera is big time cheating for the 2.6 entry by talking about something that technically released in 2.5, though he tells me it'll be fine. Something about me probably taking the flack for it. Anyway, in a release largely overshadowed by 3.0, context managers becoming a standard feature is probably the most of note in 2.6. They were initially released in 2.5, but kept behind a future directive, meaning you had to opt in to use them. A lot of this functionality now serves as the de facto standard in many situations, such as file management. We move into our second oddity now, as many of you will be aware of Python 2.7's existence. However, Python 3.0 released first, just two months after 2.6, so we'll tackle that first. Unsurprisingly, the biggest changes here are the breaking ones to the syntax, which, well, we all know how that turned out. Initial reluctance to Python 3 probably contributed to the team releasing a new version of Python 2 some 18 months later, though not before they had released 3.1. This came out just six months after 3.0, and as such was an incredibly conservative release that didn't add a great deal. The biggest feature here was the introduction of ordered dictionaries in the form of collections.orderDict, though even this has since been made obsolete by later changes to the built-in dictionary type. The Python 2.7 release largely backported Python 3 changes into the Python 2 line to try and ease the transition between the two. For such a widely adopted release, that's literally all there is to talk about with regard to new features, as technically speaking, there weren't any. So we'll just say those backports were the biggest change here. Thankfully, with the release of Python 3.2 came a linear update line once again, though annoyingly, it was also pretty light on release features, making it a little more difficult to write about. However, in the depths of the changelog, it seems that Functools had a pretty good run here, with a lot of really useful functionality getting added. The most pertinent here is the wraps decorator, which has become an essential part of any custom decorator function. I was originally going to talk about the introduction of virtual environments in Python 3.3 before realising in editing that a third party package already existed for them and that most people probably don't use the standard library's venv module anyway. Therefore, the biggest feature in 3.3 is probably the ability to suppress chained exception contexts using raise from none, though to be honest there wasn't a lot to choose from here. I'm getting a little selfish here, but in my mind, the biggest change in Python 3.4 is the module I once proclaimed to be my favourite in a job interview, Pathlib. I made a video expressing my love for Pathlib in the past, and I'm very tempted to make another updated one, so look out for that, but it just makes file management so much easier. Oh, I love you, Pathlib. If it were up to me, I'd probably say that the async and await keyword syntax for asynchronous operations was the biggest change in Python 3.5, but since indently is marked down to read this bit, the biggest change by far in Python 3.5 is the introduction of type annotations. To be fair, I do like a good bit of typing. This is definitely one of the more divisive features in Python with it attracting quite a few impassioned comments whenever I made a video about them. Still, it's a good way to add additional documentation to code, especially public packages. And if you can't be bothered with them, just don't use them. Lazy computation at its finest. Python exposes a lot of ways in which you can format strings, and Python 3.6 added yet another to the mix, formatted string literals, or f-strings as they're more commonly known. They're fast, easy to use, and nice to look at. In fact, they became so popular so quickly that it's rare to see any modern code not use them outside of logging. We now start to head deeper into Python versions that probably quite a lot of viewers will be familiar with already with Python 3.7. The biggest new feature here is data classes. Atters already existed at this point, though data classes was designed to be a simple way to create data storage classes with type annotations and reduce boilerplate, all while not needing to install anything external. 
Interestingly, support for slots was considered for the initial release, but ultimately not included. It found its way in for Python 3.10. Python 3.8 was responsible for introducing perhaps the most controversial feature in the language, the walrus operator. This still divides opinion today, but perhaps not as much as it did at the time. In fact, it was so controversial, it led to Guido stepping down at Python's BDFL, basically the right to have the final say, though not for the reasons most people think. Guido was actually in favor of the proposals, even co-authoring the PEP. In fact, it was the reaction after he had accepted it, including from people in the core team that triggered his resignation. He's still heavily involved with the development of Python though, just not quite as much in the front line. The biggest change in Python 3.9 is an odd one, as it didn't have much of an impact at the time. The benefits of switching to the peg parser were only really felt from Python 3.10 onwards. Though the biggest feature thought impossible using the old LL1 parser was the new f-string syntax introduced in 3.12. For one version only, it also gave us a nice Easter egg. Python 3.10 was the first release I covered on the channel at the time, kickstarting what would become a three time a year endeavor to summarize every what's new document going. 3.10's biggest addition to the mix was the match statement that allowed for structural pattern matching. You can think of this in two ways. One, a supercharged if statement that adds a lot more power, and two, Python finally catching up with the plethora of language that already sported similar functionality. Speaking of catching up with other languages, are we allowed to talk about speed here? I think we probably can. Well, I make the rules around here actually, so I decree we indeed can. Python 3.11 was definitely characterized by the introduction of the Faster C Python project, a group specifically set up to make Python faster. Obviously. On average, 3.11 was about 25% faster than 3.10, and that trend would continue for future Python versions as well. Following on from Python 3.9, 3.12's biggest change has to be the syntactic formalization of f-strings made possible by the peg parser. This removes some of the limitations associated with f-string expressions and makes quote reuse, multi-line expressions and backslashes in expressions possible. On top of all that, it became possible for the traceback system to properly locate errors in f-string expressions as well. We come full circle with our final release with Python 3.13's free threading mode serving as the first step toward removing the gill. 3.13 is the first Python version in 27 years to not mandate the gill in all situations, but is yet to get rid of it completely. You can only enable free threading mode by compiling with a certain build flag, or by downloading a specific version, and not everything will work with it just yet. Still, this is the most excited I've seen people about Python's future in a long, long time. Perhaps ever, honestly. And with any luck, it will kickstart a new golden era for the language. We'll end off this video with a bit of future proofing by talking about what could be the biggest feature in the upcoming Python 3.14 release. It's definitely a toss up between the updated implementation of deferred evaluation of annotations that people have been waiting forever for, or PEP 750's template strings that add yet another method of formatting strings in Python, but in a really intriguing way. If you want to hear more about these features as they continue to be developed, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on updates. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like down below and let me know in the comments what your favorite feature of Python is. Make sure to check out Indently's channel after you're finished here and I'll see you in the new year for whatever we do next. How do I stop this?